Hello, nerds. Welcome back to Lobotomy Corporation. Progress. What? What is that? I it's been so long since I've had it. I'm scared. We can't do anything until the welfare team is completely upgraded, so we're just gonna go through this day and, uh... Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. We're just gonna go through this day as normal. And that means a lot of people are gonna have to die for reasons that aren't their fault. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh... Well, you didn't piss it off. Sometimes that's all I can really ask for. Uh, I completely forgot about the fucking person I sent up here! Uh, I'm getting tired of this. What the hell? Oh god damn it! Gave me a fucking heart attack. So that's what the um, that's what the cursed bees look like then. Hmm. Well, that's one way to know that it wasn't happy. Ah. So I, anytime I, so every time I have somebody work on the melting love, because. She's somewhat volatile. Speaking of volatile... Because she's somewhat volatile, I have somebody go out and get the notebook here. Now, every time that I send uh, Frank this time, Frank up there to get up there, I keep an eye on them to see if any of... if uh, that heart pops. And it looks like the disease is starting. So we're going to do the smart thing. And take care of that problem right now. You got to play smart with that thing. You give it an inch, you're going to die. Did I send somebody to that thing twice? Where's Jacob? Alright, Jacob. You don't want that. You don't want that. Oh, for fuck's sake, Finn. And it's pissing off the shoes. He's pissing off the shoes. Whatever. Not the worst thing could have gone for. Oh yes, please. Walk right to where the infection carrying person is. That's a good idea. And I'm not paying attention again. <sighs> Fucking shit. I didn't pay attention to this one because they were spawning slower than expected. That's less than okay. Ah! Yeah, I was expecting that to be the last thing I did. Okay. Not dealing with, uh... Not dealing with that now. I just need to be more careful in the future, that's all there is to it. Okay. I guess the game wanted to murder my ears anyway- NO! 
Okay, well, the good news is we'll have some people to, uh, work with the singing machine then. Why? Oh, for fuck's sake. Now, here's an idea. Let's not do that again. This whole B thing really needs to stop. Also, that's that's pretty good timing. Two issues happening at the exact same time. Ah, the death noise is louder than when they spawn. I'm sorry, the game is just picking like right now to give me all these weird noises for some reason. Well, I think that's the last clerk in there. Wait, no, no, I still have one left. Oh, that's a pretty good place. Right, right, just plop one right next to the guy that I'm trying to, uh, make suck a bit less. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fair, I guess. Uh, that's gonna be about it for today. Not a, not a whole lot, because there's not a whole lot of new stuff, but, you know... So, we're going to get the last bits of grinding we can, get the energy boxes off of the mannequin, make sure the train doesn't come during any of this time, and uh, be done with it. And we are done. Are we really going to be doing this again, game? Come on. Don't do this to me. Don't make me have to drop everything just because you don't feel like doing your job. I'm gonna have to drop everything just because you don't feel like doing your job, aren't I? <sighs> Typical. Oh wow, that didn't take nearly as long this time. <sighs> Alright, so what do you want me to look at here? A little helper? If any system issue deletes the blur from the abnormality, we will have to sincerely think of how to dis deal with the manager. Tales say the moon bewitches man, but in reality, man despairs at the moon. I mean, now I'm curious. Quiet, isn't it? Take a good look at this silence. Manager, have you ever woken up early to walk the streets during dawn? I think this moment in here is equivalent to the dawn of the outside world. Abnormalities are in hibernation due to the cliff off deterrence during the off time. Employees are preparing to let fate decide what happens to them. When the deterrence gets weaker, the suppressed powers will wake them. It's always hard to believe such a quiet place like this will soon be engulfed by pandemonium. How nice would it be to keep this tranquility? How many times do we have to fail? How much more must we get used to the darkness to finally encounter the light? Uh, good morning, Chesed. Hey, yes, good morning. Good luck today. Uh, Chesed, I've been thinking, and I believe I was really lucky to be assigned to the welfare team. Uh, just getting into lobotomy was really competitive, but getting assigned to this time? This team! That was like a miracle. Brown nosing will get you nothing. Think of it as flattery. But there's no one who cares more about the other employees like you do, Chesed. Everybody knows how little the other leaders care about their employees. No, you're wrong. I'm just saying I appreciate you. I'm sorry for keeping you so long. I'll be going now. Yes, go get ready for today. For many days, I consoled myself that I wasn't doing that bad for a Sephira. I didn't put my employees into deadly situations, and I managed to be flexible time after time. Getting mad at someone for breaking a rule, or agreeing with somebody who claimed to make this place better, 
If I take a step back and look at it all, I can't help but think... What's the point in all of this? I had hoped to send them off in peace because they were meant to die anyways. I was hiding the biggest lie of all inside, but I continued playing the role of a good leader, knowing it was all a lie. Angela also knew. She knew I could never expose every secret of this place to the employees and overthrow the system. I mean, I just didn't want to go against her. Being in the welfare department, I didn't care about the welfare of the employees at all. I was scared. Angela stopped the doubts and inquiries about this place by letting employees die, so I started helping Angela and just covered my eyes. Hey, we have an emergency! Did you hear the status report? The abnormalities are out of control! I don't know what happened, but we have to retake control of the situation immediately! I thought you didn't want to talk to me, Jibora. You can control the deterrence, can't you? We need to increase the cliff off deterrence now! Angela will call the rabbit team if the rest of the abnormalities aren't suppressed. I want to wrap things up on my side. But Jibora... No one can touch the, the Cliffoth controller without Angela's approval. You know that. So you don't want to do it. You coward. You really think you can just end this situation by going through the motions? I hope you suffer until your death succumbing to your fears. Live on the sugar-coated words from your employees. It's been a while since I was grabbed by the collar. Chessa... You knew I was coming, didn't you? You know me all too well. Maybe you are the one who understands me the most among all the Sephiroths. We can cliff off the turrets. What do you have up your sleeve this time? Do you want to know the reason again? After all this time? Jabara and the other employees are probably still fighting right now. You know that, right? Jabara is... Sorry, it's a little funny. I didn't know you would talk about Jibora. You should know, you've seen it for yourself. Jibora failed to control her in rage and has now lost her way. I'm saying, she's not fighting for some grand ideology. She will know her own condition best. Everybody has their own battles in this place, but I feel like I'm the only one who is seeing this situation. I thought you liked that, Chessa. Drinking a cup of coffee, enjoying the peaceful day with your classical music. I think I am providing the right environment for you. Uh, our conversation has run longer than I expected. So let me tell you again. Lower the deterrence. The coffee smells good. Open the door. Who are you? Your taste in music is pretty classy. Quite different from mine, though. What the... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't think you would open the door for me, so I just walked in. How did you get in here? Do I know you? I came from the head, and I was desperately looking for you all. The reason why I came all this way is... Let's just say I came here to play my favorite music. Hey, you. Can you tell me who this gentleman is? Daniel. His name is Daniel. Uh, Daniel, is it? The name is more than you deserve. I guess you are in charge of this place. Open the sector that those monsters are locked in. Like you saw earlier, it's nothing for me to open any locked door with my power. I'm just being polite, asking you to do it since you're in charge of this place. Don't resist, and just listen to me. If you do, maybe some of these people might be able to escape. It's easy to point the finger at the betrayer, but you never really know until you've experienced the situation yourself. A chill came over my entire body, a fear that I had not yet felt before. I met numerous experimental abnormalities, but I never experienced my body being paralyzed and my blood curdling like this before. So this is the head. Manager, do not give me an order. Do not try to justify cowardly acts to me. I'm ashamed for consoling myself, saying there is nothing that could be done after passing through the Tunnel of Defeat. I'm so ashamed of myself. 
I can't bear it anymore. My body is like punishment for me, reminding me of my past. I can't even bleed from this body. I don't want to be the puppet who gains approval by doing Angela's dirty work. And I don't want to be your aide who can't do anything. All that was just a series of shame to me. Manager, this is my rebellion against you and Angela. I'm the only one who survived. Saying there was nothing I could do. That I was too scared to bear it by myself. That I wanted to rescue my people from here. All are meaningless excuses. I think I will die soon as well. The head is coming here. See you again in hell. A. How does fear dominate a human's mind? How many people would keep their beliefs if they came face to face with a real nightmare? Therefore, no one can blame his reckless behavior. To be honest, everything started falling off the cliff the moment the head found this place. Our last conversation ended with a hopeless silence. Daniel, who was intelligent and held a high social position, was more talented than anyone else in the research lab. He had an excellent rep reputation from the people around him with his charming smile and humor. It might have been easy for him to get in one of the wings with his skills and personality, but he chose us, not one of the wings. Though amazing he once was, he no doubt died in despair and regret, cursing his choice. Seeing the dead bodies of co-workers in front of him, without having a single comfort of knowing that it wasn't his fault, not deserving any peace for himself. Everybody might have noticed, we've never had this kind of situation before. Those monsters were supposed to be sleeping, but they're now woken up by something. Let's not focus too much on what caused this. Let's solve the problem since the situation dictates us to. Let me say a few words before we initiate combat today. We don't need cowards in my department. Don't be careless when you face those monsters. Remember to arm yourself with rage to defeat those monsters. If you don't agree with my words, you can leave at any time. I won't shed a tear or moan those who vanish without leaving even their name. If you want your body and soul to be at peace, please put your name on the transfer wait list for the, for the welfare team. There's a reason we very few members in our department. This fucking translation. But remember, that also means every last one of you are excellent in what you do. Over. I'll talk more after sorting out this mess. Deborah, your main body's taking too much damage. Why don't we stop the suppression operation here for today? Tifreth is investigating the situation, so we should be able to solve the problem soon. I don't need it. I can still fight. But with your condition, it's- SHUT UP! I said I can still fight! 31 damaged egos and 17 dead employees so far. And 5 or 6 parts needing replacement for the main body. I'm not thrilled looking after a machine who behaves so childishly, but the Sephiroths and the Central Team weren't able to control you, and that's why I'm here. You. Poor child. Look at yourself. At one time I admired the light in your eyes, but now they are consumed by madness. What a shame that both of us are locked in this dungeon now. But I didn't break. We won't have to risk our lives facing each other like in the past, but I pity you. Stare right at the object that makes you angry. The blade that lost its way can only split the air no matter how sharp it is. How do you think I feel seeing my once rival look so pathetic? Cut, slash, destroy, throttle, and trample. I sometimes remember the faces who showed me kindness. If I could taste a small piece of revenge upon the monsters who stole their smiles, happiness, and futures, my spear and sword will never stop swinging. People are dying in my blurred vision. They always get torn apart by the monsters. 
Those dying faces differ from time to time. Some are strangers. Some are loved ones. Sometimes they transform to Christopher or Isabel. Whoever they were, I am filled with agony. I look at my paralyzed leg and severed arm, and I curse my weak body and scream with rage. And then I black out. I'm so tired of the blackouts. It's impossible to fight with such low manpower. I can't approve your offer. Please reconsider. Why should I approve an operation with such a high chance of failure? If the manpower strength is too low, I can make up for it. If they're too weak, I will make up for that too. There weren't any rules about the Sephiroth using egos. If that's what you want to do, then go ahead. Familiar grip, correct weight, and a practiced pose. This feeling is so distinct that it pulls me back into the right path away from wandering just like a road sign. I completely lose track of time while I wielded my weapon. It was a little funny to see Tifereth and Chessed's bewildered faces after they saw me covered in blood. I tried my best to stab and break them, but they will recover again someday. Some wail and others scream. I also broke and lost some of my parts, but those are soon replaced. What a perfect little hell, just for me. Are you looking for your arm? Here. Just think of it as me being merciful to a fellow warrior as I leave you with one of your arms. I don't think she knew what a tragedy she brought here that was caused by her great ideology. I don't know if it could have been helped, but this happens quite often, way more often than you think. I mean, a little sprout getting trampled to death is common. I would say you're quite a lucky survivor. You even thwarted my plans a little. I didn't expect you to kill two claws, stop the monsters, and even deal with me. About the monsters, by the way, I can't deny that they were astonishing creatures. Even after killing a bunch of your friends, they've never gotten soft or tired. I can see you aren't much different from them. Okay, if you can stand on the ground with your own two feet, then come at me. I won't break. If I can't remove these monsters, I will destroy the company myself, so that my aimless wrath can disintegrate and sleep under the ground forever. Among many fixers in the back alley, she was one of the few who could stand toe to toe with the head or the claws. She was called the Red Mist among the people of the back alley. She earned that name by protecting us from the outside threats. Michelle's betrayal led the eye to our hiding place, and the head mercilessly sicked their claws on us. Instead of dealing with her directly, the cunning head unleashed the unstable abnormalities to eliminate us. The abnormalities were out of control, tearing apart our comrades. As the claws hunted their prey, it was beyond her limits, but she gave it everything she had to protect us. She lost an eye. One of her arms were cut off, and was covered with irreplaceable scars all over her body. But she didn't give up, and she eventually protected B and myself from death. The corpse at the time demonstrated the horrendous situation she went through. She opened her eyes again after a long time had passed, but her unfocused anger dragged her down deep to the bottom, so we had to reboot her many times. You're not a good person, are you? Alright! What a day. <laughs> Got quite a bit of story done today. Now then, I'll worry about who to put in the extraction team on the next episode. For right now, I think I'm gonna take a... a bit of a needed break. <laughs> Until next time, anyways. Later!